Aloha! Welcome to a new episode of Thursday Shopaholic Club. I'm Ilona, a happy influencer, and let's begin this episode. In the last video, I have mentioned that today we're not going to review any shopping hauls, any physical items at all, but we're going to review my recent trip to Hawaii. <music> Mentally, I'm still under influence of Hawaii. And not just mentally, look at my tan. <laughs> so four days ago, we came back from Hawaii. It means me and my family. And we had amazing time. So in this video, I'm going to review our trip to Hawaii and how to find a good hotel, uh, how to find great flight, where to eat, what to do, and how to, in general, you know, be very clever with your money when you're going to Hawaii, because Hawaii, ooh, can be pricey. One of my big dreams is to visit every state in the United States. And in 11 years of me living in USA, I have visited 28 states. Hawaii was one of the states that stayed in my bucket list for a long time. I wanted to visit Hawaii, I don't know, since I came to America. <laughs> I think my friend first time traveled to Hawaii in 2011 and she told me all those beautiful things, what she saw and experienced in Hawaii. And I was like, I want to go too. Hawaii is favorite destination for honeymooners, surfers and people who can afford it. <laughs> because again, Hawaii, it could be very pricey. So when we start planning our trip to Hawaii, the couple of things that we need to figure out is how we're going to get there and where we're going to stay. With the flights, it was kind of easy to figure out because we're using uh, some credit cards and I'm sure you're using credit cards too. So I personally use credit card American Express that is um, associated with uh, Delta, uh, Delta Airline. So anytime I'm making bigger purchases, I collect points and then I can um, spend those points on my flight tickets. So we had collected, oh my God, probably oh, 300,000 um, points. <laughs> I know it's a lot. <laughs> we, we were not spending those points for a long time. And uh, when we checked the tickets, we actually were able to book very nice tickets with our points. It wasn't even economy seating. We actually were able to book comfort plus seatings. So one of the advice, if you planning to travel a lot or you planning to uh, go to Hawaii, start saving your points because you always can exchange them for your tickets. Well, it's better pay with your miles than paying with the money because again, tickets could be very expensive. I think when I checked the prices, how much it cost to fly from, for example, from where I am, it's Ohio. So from Ohio to Hawaii, it cost around 1,200 both ways. And it definitely price, especially if you're, going, if you're going to buy two or three tickets for your family. And I'm not talking already for bigger family. So after we purchased our tickets, um, we start looking for the hotel. And one of my favorite, favorite websites where I always look for any hotel, it's a booking.com. I use booking.com, oh gosh, since 2007? Yes, yeah, so 2007. I'm actually, um, uh, booking.com has some levels, so I feel like I'm genius ter ter tree. What it means, I get some sparks, like uh, extra discounts, uh, sometimes free um, uh, breakfast or um, free upgrade. So I definitely like to use booking a lot. Plus, in the past, I had some situations when the hotel couldn't accommodate me or had some situation. Booking.com was able to return my money and um, just, you know, never problem with booking.com. So I really recommend to check that website. I know there's a different websites like Expedia. I never use that one, so I can't give you any review about that website. But what I like about booking.com, when you go online, you can actually check all prices of the available hotels. So even if you don't wanna book 
through the third party, what would, would be booking.com, you can still check approximate price for your stay and go maybe directly to the hotel. This is sometimes I also do. Or for example, um, if you want to collect points, uh, you also can first check the price, what day is better to travel, and then go directly to the hotel and book almost the exact same price and get the you know points or miles, whatever you're using. So on this trip, we were traveling three people, including my child. So we needed to have a hotel kids friendly. And that was one of the first criteria what I was looking for the hotels and choosing the hotel. So when I travel with my child, I always try to look for the hotels who have a kids club option or at least babysitter option. Because sometimes me and my partner want to go out and have a you know, dinner or sometimes just adult time. And I definitely want to choose a safe hotel that could take care of my son while we, let's say, enjoy our adult time. And it seems like this hotel that we chose, it was Halekulani Hotel, it had this option. At least description say this way. The other thing why I chose this hotel, it was definitely pictures and description and reviews. We really love uh, this hotel's location, uh, great stuff, that there was a variety of food, entertainment. So we really got the impression that the hotel was amazing and top notch. This hotel, comparing to other hotels, was slightly on the more expensive side. But in the same time, we really liked that um, this hotel was more modern, more like renovated, newer, and we just loved their amenities. Again, it was in the description. We didn't know what kind of hotel we were going to get. We checked also other hotels and what we saw in the picture actually didn't impress us. So we said, well, because we're not spending any money on, in, on our tickets, we're going to take a little bit more expensive hotel to just enjoy enjoy ourselves and this is why I decide to stay in Halakulani hotel now when you planning your trip to Hawaii make sure you have at least five to seven nights to stay there because the flight is long our flight was around 12 to 13 hours long and we flew from Ohio Cleveland to Atlanta and Honolulu so it took us around 13 hours to flight and gosh, we were tired. <laughs> so if you don't have a too, many, too much time, like you, you can stay just three to four nights, don't go to Hawaii, don't choose Hawaii. Try plan trip for longer stay because if you are flying that long, you wanna stay longer. So that's a, one of my advices when you plan the trip to Hawaii. Okay, so, Welcome to Hawaii. You're coming to Hawaii, you landed in Honolulu, you see the beautiful view, you're so excited, you want to get to hotel. The first problem that we occurred, it was car ride to the hotel. It was my big mistake and I was very angry actually with booking.com because I chose right through them. I chose a uh, executive car, so it, the promise was um, we're going to get a bigger car that will, you know, uh, suit up to five people, have enough space for suitcases, and you know, it will be a newer car, uh, nice uh, ride to the hotel. I think I paid one way ninety dollars, so I prepaid for the car, and our driver supposed to be there when we landed. So guess what? When we landed, there was no driver. We actually waited for driver for 25 minutes. And instead of executive car, we got Ford Fiesta. Hey, nothing is wrong with Ford Fiesta, but when you have a three luggages and three people, and Ford Fiesta, it's a, such a small and compact car, and plus driver had his own luggage there, we were pissed. But, you know, it is what it is. So, of course, I made a complaint and I'm still in the process of getting my money back for that um, ride. We're probably going to pay just, you know, uh, how much that car was worth. I, I think maybe $45 to $50, what is totally fine. But um, 
My advice, if you're traveling to Hawaii and you want to pre-order um, a car to have a ride to your hotel, hold on. You're probably going to be better just ordering uh, Uber or regular taxi. And they have a lot of taxis waiting for the passengers and uh, Uber can come to the airport very easily. So um, don't rush to order the car to have a ride uh, to the hotel. One small advice, don't pack too many clothes. I definitely advise you travel just with carry-on. Gosh, when I when I was younger, I was traveling almost like for, with two luggages. Mom getting colder, less things I need. I travel very on the light, just carry-on. So I definitely suggest you guys don't take too many things to Hawaii and actually leave some room in your luggage to purchase some items like for example that kind of dress or the or the hat or the bag so don't take too many things because you really won't need much couple swimming suits couple very uh laid back dresses uh maybe shorts i don't know if you need the pants honestly i don't know if you need the pants uh but um definitely pack small and I'm going to show you how much I packed. It wasn't that much. So I packed my luggage and my son's luggage. And another advice, don't take too many shoes. Uh, I took a couple flip-flops and sandals. I took one um, high heels, but I never ever wore them. So basically you're always going with them either sandals or flip-flops. So that's my advice. Don't take too many fancy things. Couple dresses for men, one or two sport coats for boys you know like nice clean clothes and you will be good so don't worry okay the hotel so we arrived at 3 p.m and it was six hours difference between hawaii and ohio so it definitely we definitely felt jet lag but we were so excited and uh, we right away wanted to go to the pool plus you know pool open is open until 8 p.m because we came so late that our room was already ready so we were able to go straight to the room change and go to the pool oh my god the hotel was beautiful it wasn't the the, the fanciest hotel i ever stayed but the view the view was everything you know the view of the ocean the view of the mountain uh i believe mountain leah or diamond head it's just amazing so you're laying at the pool and you see this beautiful view so you're definitely paying money for the view um now hotel's pool was kind of on a smaller side it wasn't big side and so we stayed there uh five nights and um i will be honest it's kind of was boring you know it was boring pool I definitely feel this hotel wasn't suitable for family with kids. Um, so I will try to explain you why. F first of all, there was no attraction for the kids. Uh, one day we were playing with a, a football ball with my son and um, staff came to us and was like, sorry, you can't play because, you know, it's a kind of quiet area. So you can't play with any toys at the pool. You can uh, have over big floats. You kids cannot run in the pool area. It cannot uh, have too many noise. So it's definitely more adult oriented hotel. So I was really surprised when I saw many families with kids, probably like us, we read that description and we were misled by that information. The hotel next to us was Sheraton or, you know, Marriott Hotels and they had a wonderful pool and um, I think Sheraton and Royal Hawaiian, they were connected hotels. Uh, it was so much fun there, you know, like our hotel was actually more modern and more, let's say, fancier, but those two hotels were like 
fun, alive, always something was going on. And if you would stay in any of those hotels, you could actually walk through the pathway and walk through all these hotels through their territorium. Um, our hotel had the entrance with the cart, so it wasn't that easy to enter our hotel. But Sheraton and Royal Hawaiian, you just could go and pretend like you stay there. But they had a wristband, so eventually they would see that you're not a guest of that hotel. But still, we had the ability to check them out, and my son loved Sheraton Hotel and their pool. Every day he was begging me to sneak in <laughs> to, their, to their hotel pool because it was so much fun. It had two slides, it had a kid's area, and my son was just asking me over and over why we didn't choose that hotel. Sheraton was a little bit older hotel. The rooms were not that appealing as our hotel. So yeah, this is why we chose our hotel. But next time, when we're going to go to Hawaii, we're definitely going to return. Uh, we're going to probably stay either in Sheraton Hotel or Royal Hawaiian. So when you're choosing the hotel, make sure you read well description that it will suit your needs. If you're traveling with your kids, make sure the hotel allows your kid to be kid because our hotel was kind of strict and more adult oriented. The food at Halakulani Hotel was amazing. Um, interesting fact, doesn't matter in which place we would go, we would get smaller portions. It was very interesting experience. I feel like in Hawaii, everything is like served in a smaller portions. Uh, we even actually talked with one of server and um, server said, we just don't like to eat much. And they serve you like a small, small portions and charge you a lot of money. <laughs> so it was very interesting uh, thing to notice. And I actually prefer smaller portions because I am from Europe and uh, in Europe you get smaller portions. So for me it was okay, but it was very surprising to see when you actually pay higher amount of money but get smaller portions. So for example, coffee in the morning, my latte, my favorite latte, I would get in that kind of small cup. But you know what? I actually was enjoying my food and my latte more than I would get latte in that kind of cup and I was drinking like in five minutes. So there is some kind of psychology in those smaller portions, like you probably enjoying and appreciating food and drinks more. So that's a very interesting fact. Our hotel uh, restaurants were, again, more on a pricey side. The food was amazing, always fresh, always um, a new, newer menu, like a, a, something, you know, uh, specials that day. Or if you go to the buffet, it's never, never was the same. It's always something newer. And yes, the food was amazing in our hotel. We enjoyed every day eating there. We ate in a couple places outside our hotel and it was okay experience. I can't say that it was totally bad, but it was okay experience. Probably, you know, when you don't know where to go, it's very difficult to choose a right restaurant, but I feel like, you know, if you travel there one, two, three times, you probably would know the places where to go to eat. Now, what to do in Hawaii? Well, rest. <laughs> rest and enjoy the sun. Sun, weather were amazing. You know, it was uh, that dry heat. It's like a uh, dry sauna. You in the heat, but it, it wasn't humid at all. It was such amazing weather, especially if you're from Ohio and you go to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> you will enjoy that weather. You you would really appreciate that weather. So what to do in Hawaii? So one of the things, definitely rest, uh, take time to spend either, you know, at the pool or go to a swim at the ocean. Um, a lot of, a lot of surfers and they give you lessons, surfing lessons. We didn't take any surfing lessons, but uh, if you're interested in surfing, Hawaii is a definitely spot to go because there's like a lot of surfers and on every corner you can you can find a um, person who can give you a lesson how to surf. Um, next, go around, you know, your 
Island. So we stayed in uh, Honolulu, city Honolulu, um, uh, Ohano Island. And, uh, you know, just walk around, explore the city. Uh, every day after dinner, uh, and actually we stopped eating around uh, 6, 7 p.m., what our time would be 12 or 1 a.m. Uh, and we would walk, you know, we would walk our dinner out. So the location of our hotel was very nice because we kind of were in the middle of everything. It was close to Waikiki Beach, but it wasn't in the middle of Waikiki Beach. So we didn't have any like noise. Uh, Waikiki Beach, actually, it's a very favorite spot for party people. There's a lot of bars, uh, places to, you know, to party, a lot of young cr uh, crowd, uh, young surfers. So, you know, if you're looking for something that uh, stays somewhere in the middle of Waikiki Beach. Our hotel was still close to all attractions. We were very close to shopping area. Um, every day we would go and just explore stores. Um, one day we actually took sailboat and that was amazing experience. Uh, sailboat lasted um, one hour, 30 minutes or 90 minutes. And this sailboat took us to Diamond Head to see how it looks outside and just, you know, houses. We really like this experience. It was something different. And honestly, I'm not a big boat person. Around one hour, I was already tired. I wanted to go to land. And yes, you're going to be stuck in 90 minutes. And if you have a um, seasickness, be careful because I was slightly seasick on that sailboat. I think if I would stay there like three, four hours, I would definitely get more sicker. Um, so it's a, it was nice experience. I definitely suggest you to try if you are a boat person, you like uh, boats, uh, or just you like to be on the water, on the ocean, see diamond head closer. It's definitely nice experience. But what I really suggest you take a day trip around uh, Ohano Island. We took the trip and it was amazing. So that trip lasted around eight hours and we saw so many things. We went to maybe three or four different beaches. We made the pictures in every beach and the view was amazing of every beach. And we went to a place where Jurassic Park was filmed. We also saw Chinese man hat. This is how this uh, stone calls and you kind of measure. So you made the picture with that Chinese man hat. Next, we went to the shrimp farms. We didn't go inside, but we were able to um, taste shrimps from the farm. Shrimps were wonderful, yummy. I enjoyed my lunch there. Next, we went snorkeling with turtles. I love that experience, but don't get excited. We couldn't touch uh, turtles. We couldn't swim too close to turtles. They have a lot of rules uh, related to turtles. So it calls snorkeling and swimming with turtles, but in reality, you don't swim and snorkel with them that much. But you can see them from the far. Uh, we didn't see too many. I saw two turtles close to us, and then I saw two other turtles a little bit farther away. But still, we love that experience. Uh, the beach was beautiful and very welcoming. After snorkeling with turtles, we went to the doll plantation. Yes, yes, the same pl doll plantation that you're getting your fruits, pineapples, your berries. <laughs> it was again very interesting experience. We went to the doll plantation. We tried um, pineapple ice cream. We read information how the pineapples grow, what kind of types of pineapples uh, are there. Again, very interesting, you know, something new that you're not going to see for every day. So that kind of trip, I definitely suggest you. Plus our uh, tour guide, um, woman Lisa, she was amazing. She knew a lot of information about, uh, you know, this island. She taught us Hawaiian language. Like I learned so many things. Like, you know, I honestly didn't know that there was a king and princess of Hawaii. Again, I'm from Europe. I don't know too many um, about the American history. So everything what I was 
seeing or hearing it was new for me and I was like a sponge you know listening seeing and I loved it if you're wondering what to do in Hawaii in Honolulu definitely take day trip around the island you're going to enjoy it and you know it didn't cost that much I think we paid 139 per person and 109 per child so we're, it's like worth it and worth every penny we spent uh, it's better to spend on experience than you know or any item next one shopping well in hawaii everything is pricey you know they have one district that really reminded me rodeo drive in los angeles they have that luxury row and our hotel was very close to that luxury row this is this is how they call lux luxury row and there were all kind of luxury designer stores and not just luxury designer any any designer stores like kate spade uh, chanel uh, balenciaga fendi so a lot of uh, designers besides designer stores there were local designer stores what was very nice but in the same time i feel the things were slightly pricey because again hawaii is a um, touristic uh, state and they definitely expect you going to spend money there so if you think that you can find some bargains and you know cheap things mm, it's not the best state no so in this episode you're going to see a lot of clips that i took in hawaii enjoy this video um, ask me questions in the comment sections if you need any advices where to stay what location what hotel to choose i'm willing to help you and you know going to answer your questions um, hawaii is a definitely great destination to travel if you're dreaming to go there please go because you're going to enjoy yourself it is pricey slightly pricey so save up money for this trip because otherwise you're going to be like oh my god i don't want to spend money and unfortunately you're going to spend money but it's a definitely great destination to relax and just you know spend time either with your partner or with the family or maybe just you know go and uh, have some adventures because there's a lot of young crowds and a lot of people from australia asian countries uh like a lot of japanese people um a lot of people from uh, korea and yes it's a it was great vacation well guys i hope you enjoyed this episode ask me questions give me some reactions as always like share give me some love and definitely subscribe to my channel i'm going to appreciate your support and if you have any questions ask me in comment section and i'm going to see you on next thursday at thursday shopaholic club thank you so much for being with me